Yesterday morning at 7.15 a.m., Cho Sung Wee, a South Korean resident alien of the United States and a Virginia Tech senior, allegedly entered West Ambler Johnson Hall and killed two people in that dormitory. He then went back to his room, rearmed himself with a 9mm Glock and a 22 caliber handgun, left what's been described as a disturbing note, and at 9.15 a.m., Cho entered Virginia Tech's engineering building, Norris Hall. He chained the doors and opened fire once again, leaving no victim with less than three rounds in them. And when the madness finally ended, Cho Sung Wee had brutally murdered 32 students and faculty before taking his own life by turning the gun on himself. What we don't know, and perhaps what we'll never know, is why. What could possibly bring someone to commit such a horrific act? What possible explanation could help us understand the motivation behind the worst mass shooting in modern American history? Virginia Tech Engineering Hall. Thursday, April 19th, a new video of Cho's release. Well, it means to me, uh, yeah, somebody's obviously insane. Therefore, 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 is this not a way that he was thinking about them? Garrett Evans, the first person in the story. Alan, we spent our whole show almost on this. That absolutely took your breath away when you see the tears. Made of gray and brown limestone, the Virginia Tech Engineering Hall has the signature look of early 20th century campus buildings. Inside on the second floor, basic classrooms are fitted with chalkboards and simple no-frills desks. And to a gunman intent on killing, there is a clear advantage. When Cho Sung Hui, seen here in photos he sent to NBC, stepped inside a German class and opened fire, he blocked the only entrance to the room. Students had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. When he stepped out of the first classroom, Cho was only about 10 steps away from any of five other doors. He moved freely in the hallway with a clear shot at anyone who could have tried to escape. The killer could pick any classroom he wanted. People familiar with that wing of the building say that the doors are made of solid wood. The students weren't able to look outside. They couldn't see where Cho was going next. To make the situation even worse, the doors have no locks. The last hope for some was to jump through the building's small windows, not built to accommodate a mass escape, and no easy feat to squeeze through. Not to mention the sheer drop from the second floor, an easy choice for some when it seemed like the only alternative was death. Still, police recommended a medical evaluation because he appeared suicidal. The result? A Virginia court found Cho mentally ill and an imminent danger to himself. He was ordered to be treated as an outpatient, released, and returned to campus. But Cho had other plans, which may have included making a name for himself. That became even more clear when NBC News received a package from him. It included an 1,800-word manifesto and dozens of videos. I didn't have to do this. I could have left. I could have fled. You have vandalized my heart. Read my soul and torch my conscience. You thought it was one pathetic boy's life you were extinguishing. Thanks to you, I died like Jesus Christ to inspire generations of the weak and the defenseless people. You had everything you wanted. Your Mercedes wasn't enough, you brat. Your golden necklaces weren't enough, you snob. Your trust fund wasn't enough. All your debaucheries weren't enough. Those weren't enough to fulfill your hedonistic needs. You had everything. Cho Sung Hui is dead, but he has now spoken as if from the grave. When the time came, I did it. Thursday, April 19th, a new video of Cho is released. More of the killer in his own words. NBC Today went on the defense over its decision to release the self-made video of the man who slaughtered 32 students. Let's not show these videos. Let's show images of the students, and let's show images of these students who, who have, have given their hearts to, to this community and tried to repair it and tried to heal it. A number of students have told us they're just sick of seeing this video. They've seen too much of it. It's like they can't escape it, and they just don't want to see it anymore. You've certainly been afflicted by these horrific events and this horrific tragedy and this intense media attention. 
I'm sorry that you were all exposed to these images. Can you imagine if a, a family member of yours was involved in this situation and somebody showed up at the funeral with videotape of what happened to them? Uh, the video was aired. It was the first time I had seen it, actually. And uh, my friend just kind of broke down crying right there in front of us, all of us. It's just hard for everyone, I think, when you see that over and over again. We have pain, and among us they are the anguished hearts. Tonight we remember those who were killed, not by how they died, but by how they lived. We are grace, we are forgiveness, we are the face of the Lord, we are beautiful, we are love, we are redemption, we are the face of the Lord. Everyone 